Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to another video. Today's topic, we're going to talk about relaxation processes to help you de-stress. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Pierce. I talk about spirituality and personal development in order to help you improve your life. Stress is inevitable in life. Stress is inevitable and it's actually necessary. If you think about it this way, you really can't get stronger unless you're putting physical stress on your body. So you want to get in shape, you want things to change. We need that physical stress in the form of weightlifting or running hard, whatever it may be. We have to have some sort of resistance, some sort of difficulty and challenge in order to help us grow and adapt and change. That's how it works. Stress is inevitable. It's necessary. It's actually a great thing. Stress, however, becomes a detrimental thing and a negative thing when it accumulates over time and it builds on top of itself and we don't release it or do things in order to create the balance and go back and forth in the cycle of stress, relaxing, rest, recover. Stress, relaxing, rest, recover. I often hear, or excuse me, I often use examples from personal training because I built my career on fitness and I was a trainer for about nine years. The way that you get in shape, the way that your body changes, it goes in a cycle of stimulation in the form of weightlifting, we'll say, but a necessary part for you to complete the transformation is going to rest and relaxation. So you go in the gym, you pump out some heavy weights, you run really hard, whatever the case is, you stress your body, you put a physical challenge on it, and then you have to get enough sleep, making sure you're eating right. This is the rest and recover process. And in that process of stimulation and challenge, rest and recover, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, that's what the transformation is. That's what helps you get the body that you want. Now, if we look at it in life, right, you're growing as a person, you're growing mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, you're challenging yourself, you're reading new books, you're looking at new perspectives, you're instilling new spiritual practices, you're doing these things. And in the process of that, you are changing and elevating, but just like your body needs to rest and recover in order to see physical changes, you've got to give yourself room to mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally recharge, especially in order for you to continue to elevate your vibration and complete this transformation. So we're going to talk about today what happens when stress accumulates and we don't release it in a healthy manner and give ourselves space to recover and chill out. What are some of the detriments? What does it look like? What are some of the key indicators that I'm stressed out and I'm not giving myself enough time to rest and recover? Chronic fatigue, number one, you are just absolutely exhausted. No matter what you do, no matter how much you sleep, uh, no matter what practices you're doing, you are chronically fatigued. Maybe you have insomnia, uh, you don't sleep that well, you're just drained all the time. Maybe you're rela relying on caffeine and uh, whatever, other stimulants in order to keep you up and alert. Chronic fatigue is a key indicator that you are stuck in fight or flight response. Number two, talking about emotional dysregulation in the form of anxiety or depression. You're in a constant state of anxiety. You're always keyed up. You, again, you can't calm down. You're always worried about the future. You're always focused on, oh my God, what if, what if you're stuck in this fight or flight response of fear energy. Number three, you're having physical symptoms. You are physically experiencing ailments. You're getting sick all the time. Maybe you're having headaches all the time. Maybe you're having something like uh, problems with your GI tract and you're on either end of constipation or diarrhea. Maybe you, again, are having trouble sleeping, insomnia. You're physically experiencing some kind of ailment. You have an accumulation of negative energy stuck in your body and now since you haven't cleared it out it's beginning to manifest itself in the form of physical ailments number four and i alluded to this with anxiety and depression but i want to make a bullet point just alone for anxiety and depression but emotional dysregulation this is when you're highly irritable you are highly irritable, again, maybe anxiety, maybe depression, maybe you have emotional outbursts, you have, you get 
pissed off at the smallest thing and, and want to flip out and freak out on someone. Maybe you are constantly sad or in a state of grief or in a state of fear. You're emotionally dysregulated. You're riding these peaks and valleys with your emotions. That's because, again, you're stuck in a fight or flight response and you have a built up of emotional stress you have a built up of energetic stress. Maybe you are constantly shaming yourself or others. Maybe you're constantly feeling guilty. Maybe you feel guilty about relaxing. That's a common one. And you have trouble because you think that, uh, trouble just chilling out and relaxing because you feel guilty. Ah, I should be working all the time. I'm not doing anything even on your days off. Oh, I, I'm not doing enough. I need to be, no, no, no. That's a trauma response and that stems Emotional uh, dysregulation comes from trauma responses. Another key indicator that you have an accumulation of stress that you have not released is you look to ways to get rid of that stress. You can't get off of work without having a cocktail, a joint, a glass of wine. Again, please don't take this out of context. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're constantly using substances, you clearly have a built up of stress. And you may think that, oh man, that joint, that glass of wine, that cocktail, uh, binging on Netflix or social media and scrolling yourself to sleep is a way to escape and that's what calms you down, but that becomes a crutch. And in reality, you're not releasing that emotional struck, uh, stuck stressful energy in your energetic field. All you're doing is ignoring it. And by ignoring it, you're just accumulating more. So of course, you're probably thinking, well, what am I supposed to do, Pierce? How do I get rid of this stuff in a healthy manner? Of course, we're gonna talk about that. So before we talk about ways to alleviate this stress, some specific practices and things that I do in my life, some things that I can recommend to you that I know for a fact work for myself, you probably already do a lot of these things. We're gonna talk about some of the emotional trauma responses as it pertains to dysregulation. I thought it was important to include kind of a subtext about trauma responses because as you, a light worker, a star seed, you've probably had a rough childhood or a lot of difficulty in the past, especially when you were young growing up. And there are four trauma responses that come up a lot as a result of experiencing hardship, especially when we're young. And they are fight, flight, fawn or freeze. And so if you have an accumulation of stress, what happens is as a result of defaulting to one of these four trauma responses, it can be hard to calm down because we're triggered and we're stuck in that state of fight or flight and we either fight or we run from things or we freeze in place and disassociate from our own bodies or we fawn, which is basically sacrificing your own well-being in order to make others happy so that you feel safe. And if you do these things on a consistent basis, again, it's all unhealthy patterns of emotional that create an emotional dysregulation and this keeps us stuck in that stuck energetic field and vibration and doesn't allow us to clear our energy, doesn't allow us to relax, doesn't allow us to be present so that we can come back and do what we need to do in order to move our lives and the lives of others that we care about forward. So what we're gonna do now is talk about some of the ways that you can healthily release the fight or flight response and get into a place to de-stress, to relax, to chill, to heal, to recover so that you feel fueled and re-energized, rejuvenated, and fully alive, nurtured, taking care of yourself so that you can do what you need to do to move your life forward. What's important for you to understand is you've got to consistently come up with your own relaxation routine practices, your go-tos to help you clear your energy because if your energetic field becomes stagnant or has an accumulation of negative energy from other people constantly projecting situations, environments, toxic people, things, foods, drugs, all these things, in a consistent way, your vibration will never change. It will never truly raise, and therefore you will be stuck in the same patterns, creating the same circumstances in your life. And the whole point of this channel and all these videos is to help you improve your life so that you're happy, you're healthy, you're fulfilled. This is you being your best self, being an example, 
raising the vibration of the conscious collective and helping everybody that you care about by helping yourself first, creating the life that you want. So that's why you're here. That's what we do. That's what this is about. And nothing changes in your life unless your energy and your vibration changes. So number one, this is what I would recommend for everybody is to create a safe space in your immediate environment. Create a little Zen space for you. Create a little altar with some candles or some incense or some crystals or some plants and a comfortable place where you can just go and be away from anyone or anything, away from your phones to social media, all these things. Because again, that's just distracting yourself so that you can come to a nice little Zen peaceful place to meditate, to chill, to just sit there and read a book, maybe just lie on your back, listen to some music, like light some incense or an essential oil diffuser or something. See what I'm going with here though? It's a place of Zen, some place where you can just chill out. Another practice that you can do along with that under the overarching umbrella, it's about your environment, right? So you create a nice Zen space. That's one place for you to have a chill environment for you to de-stress. Another place is the environment itself. If you have the luxury of going to the ocean, go to the ocean. It's one of the most cleansing places you can be. The ocean will clean and cleanse your energetic field and recharge you simultaneously. It's incredible if you have the luxury of going to an ocean or another body of water. Maybe just a stream or a creek that you live by or a lake or a river. Water is so incredibly cleansing. Think about it. What do you do when your body is physically dirty? You take a shower. So go to a body of water, clean yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Number three, along with protecting your environment, you cut out toxic people, situations, and environments in your life. Now, if you can't, say you work in a place right now and you're working on transitioning out of that job, but it's a super toxic place, but you have to work there because you have to make a living to support yourself while you make this transition. Again, we'll talk about energetic protection and clearing in another video, but if you can, you have the luxury, anybody that's draining your energy, Honestly, ruthlessly cut them out. And you may not have to cut them out completely, but limit your time around them because maybe it's a toxic family member and you can't get away from your brother or your sister, your aunt, uncle, mother, father, whoever it is. You limit your time, you limit the way that you're around them and protect your energy. Another practice that you can do is spend time in solitude alone. Whether they're people you love or they're toxic people, whether they're people you feel energized and inspired around, spending time in solitude is one of the most important things you can do because it will allow you to tune into your own vibration in silence, in peace. Now, one thing I want to say about solitude is if you struggle with solitude and you're someone who really has trouble being alone, and really has to be always doing something, and even when you're alone, the music has to be on in the background, this is a clear indicator you've got a lot of healing to do around this specifically, because think about it. When you're alone, whose company are you in? You're just by yourself. So if you can't be alone by yourself for that long, you have to be around other people, have something going on, you're avoiding being with who? You're avoiding being alone you're avoiding being with yourself, which means there's a lot of chaos there. There's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of anger, a lot of unresolved issues or emotions, energy that's there that's unresolved, that's preventing you from really tapping into your higher self. Again, this is why you can't be alone or you really struggle to because it's really hard to be with yourself because there's a lot of unresolved stuff you don't want to look at. If you can't be with yourself and find peace within yourself and happiness with yourself, you're not gonna find peace and happiness outside of yourself or in other environments. You're just basically avoiding it and creating chaos, more chaos and negative energy in your life. You're just making that accumulation of stress and negative energy go up rather than down, which is what we're trying to do. Another great specific practice is meditation, of course. You've heard this a million times. It's not me saying this, this is what the greatest spiritual teachers that have ever walked the face of the earth and not walked the face of the earth and every even modern high-powered businessman and rock stars, right? The Beatles uh, coined or didn't coin, but popularized transcendental meditation. You've heard it from everybody, not just me. Meditation is one of the most powerful medicines and one of the most simple medicines that you can give yourself. That place of peace and inner serenity, of being quiet with your breath, 
really allows you to clear your energetic field, your mental and emotional state. Exercise is another great practice you can do if you do have an accumulation of, say, angst, irritation, anger, that type of energy, you go and pump some weights out. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a healthy outlet that you can really get that stressful energy out, that sadness, that anger, that whatever energy is inside of you, go and exercise. It's a great specific practice. Music, this goes along with your environment, your ambiance. Listen to some smooth jazz, listen to some classic, classical uh, rock, listen to some classical music, whatever you like. Or if you feel you need to dance and put on some hard rock and go pump weights in the gym, go and do that. The point here again is that you do what you feel is right for you in order to get into a peaceful, calm state and release stress and accumulated negative energy in your life. That brings me to one of my last points and practices. It's not really a practice, but more of a guideline. This is all about your intuition. You are a different person than I am as you are to her or him or etc. We're all different people. What's most important is that you trust and develop your intuition. And whatever is calling to you, trust that calling and follow it and go and do that thing or those things or do nothing if that's what you're feeling called to. Listen to your intuition. You know what's best for you. You've got to learn to trust yourself that you know what's best for you. And it's constantly fluctuating. I'm just giving you some general guidelines and suggestions, right? Because I don't know what's best for you, only you do. So do what's best for you, listen to your intuition. One of the things I want to impart upon you that's extremely important is that if you are someone who really finds it hard to relax and chill, you have got to be very intentional and deliberate about making this a regular part of your life. If you do not do these things or this thing, there will be an accumulation of negative energy and it will overwhelm you. You'll become anxious, you'll become depressed, you may become physically sick, have headaches, uh, constipation, GI tract issues, you know, whatever, rashes, highs. You will have insomnia, things like this. This is what happens when we don't release stress in a healthy manner. The main thing is that you make this a deliberate and intentional thing that you do for yourself or time and space that you give for yourself intentional, deliberate thing that you don't do, right? If you need to do nothing, follow your intuition. So I do have some amazing quotes that I found, I think that sum up this entire video fantastically. Is that a word, fantastically? I don't know, we'll go with it. The first one is, the time to relax is when you don't have time for it. The time to relax is when you don't have time for it. The next one, that I'll uh, share with you is, when we are unable to find tran tranquility within ourselves, it is useless to seek it elsewhere. The last quote I'll give you is, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is absolutely nothing at all. You're just chilling out. So that's what I got for you today, guys. Love you so much, man. These videos are getting longer, so I will do my best to shorten them up, but I appreciate you, especially if you stayed till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.